Uh, Chris Poser is going to be uh, speaking to us. Chris has worked uh, for Ford Motor Company uh, in driveline components engineering since 1999. And the example that he will be showing us is how Glyphworks is used at Ford Motor Company to perform damage analysis for driveline components and the benefits seen from using the software. So perhaps you could just uh, put your hands together for Chris. Thank you. Um, um, a little background. A new vehicle comes out, and um, we have to know, will the uh, driveline components pass the duty cycle? You know, the rear axle, PTU, RDU, drive shaft. And usually the, the vehicle to collect the road loads is behind schedule. And we need to get the data to be green to prove that our components will pass. So uh, we are in a rush to collect the data. We get the data. The gear people want to have the histogram. And there's usually three scenarios that come from the histogram. You crunch the histogram. There's 100 road load files. You give it to somebody else, and there's the damage comes out, you know, 500%. It's way too high. It's too low, you know, 0%. We must have done something wrong. And, um, or the component is too big. We can cost reduce. Or it's, it's right on target. It's around 50%. On the, on the scenarios where the damage is too low or way too high, we're, you know, what, what went wrong? Is, is the data right? Is our histogram, was it crunched incorrectly? So it's almost like we need to know the damage for the histogram before we give the histogram to anyone to analyze it. Okay, so my objectives. Uh, number one, calculate gear damage for, this is for an all-wheel drive. Uh, PTU is a little gearbox on the transaxle that sends torque down the drive shaft to the RDU. And the RDU has hypoid gears in it. And the differential gears send the torque out to the rear wheels. Uh, number two, verify the road load data. Uh, what channels are available? What are the sampling frequencies? What are our units? Are these parameters common between different data sets? Maybe we have 100 files, but three are from a different vehicle, and the rest are from another vehicle. So. Um, configure the channels into working channels. So I call the working channels would be like, what's our drive shaft torque? Or what's our um, drive shaft speed? Um, uh, next is uh, inspect the data for spikes, data voids. Are these, um, is our data within proper limits, parameters? Create individual histograms and check the histograms. Calculate individual histogram damage and check the total damage. Create a duty cycle histogram and double check. Then you can go to maybe creating rain flows. Um, so first of all, is verifying my data. I, um, I like to, to be able to show my work like I was taught in school and to be able to come back to work I've done a year or five years ago and pick up right where I was. Um, so I work in Excel, and here, you know, this is what I have in the road load data. I, I write it down, you know, my drive shaft torque, channel 31, it's at 500 hertz, it's in foot pounds. You see my wheel speeds, my uh, wheel torques, what gear I'm in, engine RPM, vehicle speed, et cetera, et cetera. So I write down what I, what I have in Excel to work with. Um, and I conf uh, configure my working channels. I like to use a common sampling frequency. I like to use common units between all my work. So I've picked, uh, I like SI units, Newton meters, and rev revolutions per second. Um, I, I, again, I have my equations I'm writing in Excel. So like um, right here, my drive shaft torque calculated from my half shaft transducers. You know, left-hand wheel torque plus right-hand wheel torque times my axle ratio, and I convert it over to Newton meters, sampling frequency, 500. What's cool about Excel is you can just copy this equation and paste it into your time series. And this equation could be huge, you know. And you just 
control V and control and uh, control C and control V into your time series calculator and the glyph works and you know your your equations right instead of having to type it in um, now that um, so now that my data has been into converted into working channels with my uh, time series date um, calculator does it make sense so I use a metadata display glyph to compare min max and mean values and then I use a time series display to visual, visualize each file. So usually there's, you're looking at 20 SIF files here, but there could be 100, 400. And you know, right here, I, so I do a uh, metadata display, and I can paste right into um, Excel. And you know, right, right here I see a spike. We're only supposed to be commanding maybe 900 newton meters of torque. And there I have a spike of 1,240 newton meters. So you know, the next thing is, what am I going to do about that? But um, so right here, I'm using Excel to look at my data and to double check it. So here's a time series display where I'm looking at the same data, and you can see that spike of 1,243 over there. Um, I also I'll get into this, but you're looking at the, um, the green is our drive shaft speed, the blue is our drive shaft torque, and red is our gear damage <coughs> integrated as we go along the time series. And you can see this blue spike right here, and you can see our gear damage. You really, you need torque and speed to damage the gears. And you can see here at this spike where it occurs, the 1243, there's no, there's no drive shaft speed. So it's really just a glitch in the data, but it's not going to affect, affect my results at all. The more, majority of my gear damage is coming from these uh, wide open throttle events. And you can see the, the damage, gear damage is jumping during the event. So I could just ignore this spike in this case. Um, so now I get into the integration glyph. So with my uh, TN curve, I take um, torque and speed, the integration glyph to predict the gear damage for each of individual time series data. So this is the old method that I was taught is you would build the whole histogram, put the 100 events, all their multipliers into a giant histogram and then calculate the damage. But I'm, what I'm doing now is I'm calculating the damage for each event and then I can double check my work torque, speed, do they make sense? Does the damage make sense? So right here I'm using uh, metadata display. There's my drive shaft torque, 1243 max, min is uh, negative 345. Drive shaft speed, 22 revolutions per second is the max, and my gear damage. And here I'm using a time series display to look at it. So now, I, um, now I, I'm confident with my data. Next is I uh, create histograms and I double check my histograms. So I have my working channels, I have my proper units, I'm in my proper, um, my, I know my sampling frequency, I create my histogram and I uh, double check my histogram with my metadata display. So like right here, this is how I'm double checking my histogram. If I know my, my mean drive shaft speed is 10 revolutions per second, and I know the length of my time series is 10 seconds, there should be 100 drive shaft revolutions. So when I spit out the CSV histogram from Glyphworks into Excel, there should be 100 drive shaft revolutions. And I know my max torque, I know my min torque, I know that's, so I know what, what ends my histogram look, ends at and torque values on the X, and I'm, I can do the same thing with my drive shaft speed. So here, here we go. Um, this, so in Excel, I make up an Excel sheet, um, and the, this color right here is, my, is, a, is the CSV data from Glyphworks, and I can just copy paste in. So if I have 100 events, I can take the Glyphworks CSV files and pop copy paste them in here. 
and I can visually look at it. So, so what you're looking here in Excel is that. And you have your TN curve for miner's rule, drive shaft torque along the X, drive shaft re revolutions in the Y. The blue is my duty cycle. So this is really my CSV from Glyphworks, my histogram. And you can see here, this red is my gear damage per torque bucket. And you can see in this, 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 this time series file, the axle is being damaged from roughly 1,200 newton meters to 800 newton meters in um, drive shaft torque. That's what's hurting, damaging this um, component. Also, this is a Glyphworks um, XY display. And you can see you have your um, drive shaft torque, drive shaft speed, gear damage. And you can see every time the vehicle is pulling a heavy trailer, and after it, when it's, um, it has lots of torque, with lots of speed equals lots of gear damage in this one event. So what I'm doing here is, there's, say there's 100 road load files, and I, can, I know the gear damage, and I can um, sort the 100 SIFs in Excel from min to max damage, and then I can go and look at the events with the most gear damage. That's what I'm doing here, I'm, you know, and you can look at it, and, could we truncate the torque in this event? Um, or do we need a, a bigger, bigger rear axle? Um, but I'm, trying, I'm using Excel XY display and Excel chart to look at the data. So you put it all together. So I've airproofed the raw data. I've created and inspected my working channel, drive shaft speed, drive shaft torque, calculated the damage per individual events. I've been created, I've created and inspected my histogram. With the multipliers in Excel, you can calculate the gear damage on each event, and you can figure out what are your big hitters, what's uh, killing the component, what, what torque buckets contain the most gear damage. Um, you can also put a new T in, a new torque uh, versus number of cycles, into Glyphworks to see if a larger axle or a gear upgrade could um, get you green. Then you can schedule a full duty cycle into a histogram to give to the gear engineer. And you already know the answer for what, how much damage is in this histogram and um, what events are causing all the problems. Um, so another thing I like to do is I, um, once I get a flow, I, I kind of add on to it. So for like a truck, you have your rear drive shaft speed and you have your rear drive shaft torque, so you can figure out your hypoid damage and your differential damage. But you also have the data for the front drive shaft and you know the front drive shaft speed, so you can figure out your front drive high poi damage, your front differential damage, so you can add on to this glyph work, this uh, flow. And then you can also start doing um, front and rear drive shaft rain flow cyclic torque histograms, or for half shafts, and you just add to it to uh, fit what, what you need. And you can add on to it. You, if you keep track of your work, you come back to it a year later. You know, someone's interested in a front strut or something else, and you just, you know, keep on working with that same flow, and it'll evolve, evolve with time. That's what I got. Any questions? Thank you. <laughs>